Hello and welcome to Evangel Online. This is your channel where you can discover what's happening at Evangel right now and how you can be a part of it. Evangel is one church in multiple locations, including right here online. Feel free to explore our videos to see what God is doing in and through our church. You'll find stories of people just like you whose lives have been changed. People who are growing together, serving others, and making a difference in the world. You'll also find all sorts of resources to help you grow in your faith journey. From sermons and additional content from Pastor Jordan, to music from Evangel Worship, fun videos for kids, and content for teenagers to help them grow into confident adults, Evangel is a place that no matter where you're at, we want you to encounter Jesus. God has something so special for you, and we want to come alongside you and help you discover what that is. So subscribe here, check out all the content that's available to you through the links below. Thank you for watching and subscribing, and as always, welcome home. Today we are privilege to have with us a brother, a friend, a prophetic voice to our nation and our world that is desperately needed. Amen. A man that has a backbone. A man that has a backbone in an hour where many don't. And I'm thankful that this man, this brother, he's a friend to this house as well and He's going to be bringing the Word of God. And ushers, if you would come and bring the special offering envelopes at this time, um, you're going to receive a special offering envelope. And I don't know if you've seen how crazy it is out there in our nation and in our world um, and how few voices are calling for truth and righteousness in the hour that we live. And when we have the opportunity to bless the men and the women who walk in these mantles, walk with this anointing, we need to bless, amen? And so I'm gonna challenge you to give. There's baskets down front. You can give while he's preaching and speaking. There's drop boxes in the lobby. Um, I want us to bless the man of God. Also, before Rabbi Khan comes, we have a dear brother and friend here, Brother Steve Strang, who is the owner of Charisma. It's a large Christian publishing house that produces a lot of the Christian works in our nation and our world today. And so thank you for joining us. Let's welcome Rabbi Jonathan Kahn as he comes to the stage at this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. You may be seated. It's a blessing to be back. I always feel like I'm home when I'm here at Evangel. Uh, and the only thing is that my friend, Pastor Gary, is in glory and rejoicing. You know, that, that's the time I don't see him. We will see each other soon, but I know that you're in great hands. The mantle is upon Jordan, who is a humble, godly man of God, truly, in every way. And with Kim, then it's just a, a blessing to be back. Um, and I have a lot to share with you. And tonight, uh, no matter how much I share, let me just uh, share with this now so you know. I can only give you a taste. There's so much more. And my job is to get the word out. And this is part of it. Um, and that is as soon as it ends, the service ends, uh, I'm going to go to wherever they have the books and I'll meet you. I'll stay as long and sign as many books as I can. So before we go full blast, let me just give you, as I always do, a quick idea of what they'll have for you right after the service. And not only for you, because you guys are amazing, you uh, scoop up the books, but to, to give it to other people, you know, in your life. Number one is the book of mysteries, and that opens up hundreds of the mysteries of God to get blown, not just to get it blown away, but people have been giving this to unsaved people and not one has ever said no to it and they're getting saved by it. So use it for that as gifts. Also, the second is the Harbinger 2. I waited eight years because the Lord said, now's the time to do it. This is for what is happening. Let my people know where it is going. The, the mystery is continued. It's still coming true from the Harbinger to this day. The third is the Oracle. That's the only book I've written specifically specifically opening up the mystery of end time prophecy of the age of Jerusalem, Israel, the countdown to the end. The fourth is the paradigm, and that's at the so specific, it actually gives the, the dates when things are to happen, when they did happen, the exact time of 9-11, and 
Capitol Hill, what's happening to this day. Um, the fourth is what I shared last time is the return of the gods. That is explosive. It is, I'm, I'm amazed they didn't try to ban that. This is the spirits behind the gods or spirits behind what is happening now, the dark trinity affecting everything uh, in America and touching all of our lives. And the last, the newest one that I, I wrote after I was here is the Josiah Manifesto. That's the ancient mystery and guide for the end times. And it is already coming true. I'll tell you, I'll give you a taste of that. Um, but I'm going to give you today some of the mysteries of that. My call is to get the word out, so this is to encourage you to get it, not just for yourself, get it for other people as well. Uh, what they're going to do is, and this is only where I speak, most of these are hard covers. They list about $30 now, new, but one book is going to be 15 but you know if you get two, it's going to go down and down and down until it goes to $10 less than a Big Mac meal at McDonald's. But you can't save anybody with a Big Mac. Take advantage of it. It's the lowest place on earth today. That's it. Take advantage of that. And last thing, one more resource that is not available anywhere. I usually bring it on the plane. It's not on Amazon. It contains not only some things that we're going to touch today, the Josiah Manifesto, but, and it's only where I speak, but it is the Josiah Manifesto Uncensored 8 DVD album. has the uncensored material. is nowhere else on earth. Mysteries that are nowhere else that I've not put anywhere else. Events caught on video, prophetic. Um, and one thing about it is that it's already coming true. What happened in Israel, I'm going to, what happened on October 7th, this happened after the book came out, the mystery, there's a mystery in the book that actually foretold it down to the very day that it would happen. And I'm, I'm going to give a taste of that tonight. But the thing is that, so I threw in an, an extra ninth DVD, which has this mystery that may even enable you to know exactly the day, what will happen and the days it will. So that's only here and take advantage of it afterwards and there'll be a sheet if you want to get prophetic updates and free gifts, uh, put that down. But that's it, are we ready? Father, we just praise you and thank you. I ask my Lord, your anointing in my weakness, be strong in your power and touch your people. And we thank you, Father, that you are here with us, your people. In Yeshua, Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, the Bible says that the sons of Issachar had to know the times they were in. We are in prophetic times. Last night, the world again, the focus was turned to Israel. Last night, Israel again was the center of controversy, the center of warfare, uh, and it, you know. And I'm going to touch on this more. Is this actually in the Bible? What is happening? I'll touch on that tonight. But the what I want you to see this morning is that it looks like it's out of control, but God is very much in control. He is very much on the throne. On Friday night, it was a Friday night in October, I was led to share in my congregation, actually it was probably, probably, uh, well, it was this last October, and one of the mysteries from the Josiah Manifesto, and that mystery was going to come true the next day across the world. The mystery foretold that there would be an attack in the land of Israel. It would be a ground invasion. It would happen on the Sabbath. It would happen on the first Saturday of October. It happened the next day. I don't know how many other mysteries are going to come true from that or the book, but I will be touching on that tonight. Also, the ancient calendar that, that actually specified all the shakings that came on America, the, the recent signs, maybe we'll touch on the, on the eclipse and that, and the Nineveh sign that has come, the blueprint for the end of the age tonight, and I was asked to give you the blessing tonight. So the, I do this once a year to hear the ironic blessing to you from God, and also sound the shofar, the jubilee trumpet for your blessing. So we'll do that tonight, invite people out. But I want you to see how God is over everything. What if God was sending us a message? What if he was revealing us a blueprint for the future, what we need to know, what we, how to stand, how to prevail. What if we were all experiencing the last few years an actual mystery from God, and I'm, that's when I'm going to take you on a journey, of a prophetic journey. And it begins in, for me in Cuba. A stranger asked me, to, he came from Cuba, and he said, come, you need to come to Cuba. In Cuba, Fidel Castro, the dictator, opened up the island 
for the religious freedom for one month. And, it, and so the believers of Cuba sent this man to ask me to come and open up this one month of freedom where the gospel could go across the island in these gatherings. So I went to Cuba. And I opened the first, I sounded the shofar to open up this gathering and this, this month of freedom of the gospel. And I was led to proclaim the mystery, the message of the Jubilee. It's written in Leviticus 25, you will count seven sevens of years and then proclaim the year, the 50th year, the year of Jubilee. So I'm proclaiming freedom throughout Cuba. And the man who's translating for me is a man I asked from my, our congregation who actually led the Spanish ministry named Felix. And he said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go. And he came with me and he translated everything I was sharing about the Jubilee and we're going across Cuba. And it turned out, well, he reached the end of his journey in a place called Camaway. And he had to go home at that time. It was his last day. And only by that time did he tell me the story. I had no idea he was born in Cuba, born on the island. When Castro came to power, he lost everything, their house, their land. While he was still an infant, they took him to America. He grew up, he came to find the Lord. He was saved, and he always wanted to go back to his homeland. And he journeyed with me, and he never told me, but it turned out the last day was in this land called Camaway, and it turned out that Felix was born in Camaway. And that night, the people who arranged the gathering, I, they had no idea, they, they, they sent us to a place to minister, which is in, out of, in the middle of nowhere, was a farm, and I, I'm getting ready to minister, but I couldn't, find my, couldn't find Felix. Finally, I saw him in the distance, walking with two of uh, the farm hands, and, he, and he, looked, he looked not right, and I said, he looked shaken. I said, what, what happened? He said, this place. I said, what do you mean, this place? He said, he said I said, what? He said, this is the land of my family. This is my grandfather's land. This is the land of my inheritance. The ancient law of the Jubilee says everyone shall return to the land of their inheritance. And so here we are sharing that word across Cuba and God is leading us back to the very place that he lost. And the thing is, he always dreamed. He prayed to God at the Western Wall before this. He said, Lord, if you bring me back to Cuba, I'll build you a church on the land of my family. And it turned out they led him across the, the farm and there was the church. They had built it already. And that night, Felix preached in the, in the church of his family's land. And the pastor opened up that service, not knowing anything, said, oh, this is the word I want to share. He opened up by sharing Leviticus, everyone shall return to their own possession. God is the God of Jubilee. God is the God who restores, wants to restore what was lost, break the chains of every bondage, wipe away debts, bring you into the land of your inheritance. And Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, is our jubilee. And we need to live in that power. But there's another side to the jubilee. That was a, there's a whole other side, and that, that was to take place also in Cuba in the last event. You see, in the, in the Jubilee, it's not just you get back what you lost, but if you took something that didn't belong to you, if you took somebody's land, then in the year of Jubilee, it's taken from you. So the Jubilee also has an aspect of restitution or judgment. Well, the last event of this, 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 this month in Cuba happened in Havana in Revolution Square. And in, on that day, Fidel Castro shows up. And I get invited to go to his palace, the presidential palace. And actually, a man, a pastor, had come to the congregation just from Cuba before I left, and he gave me a, a prophetic word, and he said, you will enter the king's palace. So now it came. And I came there with, an, with, with three objects to give to Fidel Castro. The first was a Bible. They were banned in Cuba. I gave him a Bible in Spanish inscribed to him. The second was a shofar, the sign of the jubilee, inscribed with a scripture. And the third was a, was a sheet of paper where I wrote a word to him. It was a prophetic word linked to the jubilee. Well, it turned out that those objects, the, the second two, would give him the exact amount of time he would have left before his power would be removed. Down to the year 
the month, the week, the day, and the very hour. And it was all linked to the mystery of the Jubilee and to that other side of it, that if you took what didn't belong to you, Fidel Castro took what didn't belong to him, it would be removed. And this has everything to do with America. You see, America, we also took something that didn't belong to us. We took the lives of our children. You know, the Lord, the, the Lord told the prophet Jeremiah, go to the valley of Hinnom where the, where the people are offering up their children. And he says, tell them because of what you did, it's going to come back to them. The ancient law, you shed the blood of children, it's coming back. Now, putting it together, when did America begin killing its own children? Abortion. Began in 1970. That was three years before Roe Wade. That's when abortion on demand began in this land. So when is the jubilee year of that? Count 50 years it takes to the year 2020. Anything happened in 2020? Well, something did happen. A contagion, a plague came. The, when, when, when Jeremiah spoke about what was going to happen to Israel because of what they did to the children, he used a Hebrew word. The word is dever gadol, which means a great plague or pandemic. And so this comes. We took life, and now life was taken. This is a gigantic mystery. You see, the day that abortion actually, uh, uh, the nation turned to abortion is the day that it appeared in New York in the legislature, the, the, the bill appeared to legalize abortion. It was going to lead to Roe versus Wade. happened on January 20th, 1970. If you count 50 years from that day, it brings you to January 20th, 2020. Anything happen? January 20th, 2020 is the official day that this plague came to our land. 50 years to the day when we turned to the killing of children. That's when it entered. But when it all fell, that was in March. We all remember it. That's, remember, there was a day that the president went on, the, on television and he proclaimed it. He said that you know, now we are under quarantine. The lockdowns began. Wall Street crashed. Um, everything happened on that day. It was called, the, the media called it the day that changed everything. It was March 11, 2020. Go back 50 years from that day, it takes you to March 11th, 1970. Anything happen? March 11th, 1970 is the exact day we began killing children in our land. 50 years to the exact date. But it goes even further. You see, there was a place, you know, you know Jeremiah said that this is going to return to where you shed the children's blood. The Valley of Hinnom. Does America have a Valley of Hinnom? It does. It's called New York. New York is the center, the capital of abortion. More children have been shed. Their blood has been shed in New York than any other place. Notice what happened when this, when this play comes to America. It focuses on New York more than any place. One out of every two cases were happening in America were happening in New York. And New York is also the gate. You know, the Bible speaks about judgment coming to the gate. Well, well the thing is that 50 years before this, Abortion came to the American continent through New York. And for those first three years until Roe versus Wade, most of, the, of abortions were taking place in New York, the majority. 50 years later, they discovered scientists were looking at the, the genetics of the virus. And you know what they found out? If you had COVID, most of this, the virus, it came through the gate of New York where we killed our children 50 years before. So if you had the virus, it actually had the markers pointing to the gate where we did that. Now, one more before we go to another mystery. You know, Jeremiah said that it's going to match. What happens to the nation is going to match what you did to the children. Well, so, so the question has to be asked. I asked it in the book, and that is that, that, well, how many children were killed in those first three years from 1970, the entrance, until Roe versus Wade? The answer is 1.3 million. Fifty years later, we have another three-year period. It, it's a three years of COVID. How many Americans were killed? The plague struck down 1.3 million, the same number of children. Now we move to another mystery. Could there be a mystery from the, that actually foretold or foreshadowed what happened on Capitol Hill on January 6th? This is a great controversy. The, got, there's a big war over that day. But to speak about that, we have to open up the mystery of Donald Trump. I've shared in that in the paradigm, 
But the thing is that after I finished the book called The Paradigm, the mystery kept going. And that what, what this, this mystery is about, because the Bible has everything, and that is that behind the events and the leaders of our day, there's actually ancient prototypes from the Bible. And though he doesn't know it or doesn't intend it, and this is not about a man, but the thing is he is following, Donald Trump is following the prototype of the ancient biblical leader, Jehu. Jehu was a man of controversy. He was wild. He was unpredictable. He wasn't a politician. He was a fighter. Donald Trump fights with everybody. In fact, there's evidence in the ancient Hebrew that Jehu had a Twitter account, but we're not going into that. We don't know that, Je that Jehu was a man of God, but he was used by God. Jehu mounted a chariot for the, for the throne. Donald Trump began a race to the White House. Jehu made an alliance with the religious conservatives of the land. Donald Trump made an alliance with the religious conservatives of America. Jehu's rise took place in the 12th year of the king, the present king. The rise of Trump took place in the 12th year of the president the, the, at the time who was on the national stage for exactly 12 years, that was Obama. In order to come to power, Jehu had to come face to face in a showdown against the nation's former first lady. So Trump had to come face to face in a showdown with the nation's former first lady. The polls said that Hillary Clinton would win, but the template said that the one who walks in Jehu's shoes will win. And she did. Hillary Clinton had been on the national stage for 22 years with her husband, then on her own for 12 years in public office, and then back to, for two years to run for president. That's 14 years. So 22 years with her husband, 14 years on her own. In the Bible, the, the former first lady who was a queen, I don't want to mention that she was Jezebel, was on the national stage for 22 years with her husband on her own 14 years until, until the showdown with Jehu. Now, what I'm about to tell you actually happened three years after the paradigm that book was finished, but it's foreshadowed in the book. And that is this. Jehu, at one point, calls for the people throughout the nation to come to the capital city. Trump calls for the people to come to the capital city. Jehu, in the city of Jehu, is a great ancient capital building. It's actually a temple, a great temple, capital temple. Well, there's a great capital building in America. In the account of the Bible, the people of Jehu actually surround that Capitol building, and then at one point, they storm that Capitol building. Well, on January 6th, the same thing happened. And this is not to condone, it's to reveal. Now, and now there's so much more here, but just say this. In those days, the Capitol Police announced the number of how many they had arrested on site for that, the, the riot. Whatever. They arrested and made headlines, 80 people, 80 people over and over again on the headlines. The Bible records that a, a number, or actually puts a, a, in Hebrew the words shmonim ish, to speak of those who stormed the, that ancient capital building, that translates to 80 people. Now there's so much more to reveal, but that week was a week of spiritual warfare. You see, there was a new agenda, there was a new a, a change in the government, a new party took over, pretty much. And the thing is, that Congress was, was ushered in that week before January 6th, a few days before, with a prayer that ended not in the name of God, but in the name of Brahma, a pagan god. That's how it started. And actually, the guy who prayed that prayer, I was led to write of him in the paradigm three years before. So it was a new agenda that took place. And that agenda was for the killing of children. The agenda was for what we would call sexual immorality. And the agenda was for what, against what we would call religious freedom. That's the agenda of Baal in ancient times. In the Bible, in the template, Jehu comes against the temple of Baal. He wars against the temple of Baal. When Jehu rises, the temple of Baal falls. When Jehu rose, he pulled down the temple of Baal. There has actually been an ancient temple of Baal in the Middle East. It has stood for 2,000 years. Trump actually announced his presidency in 2015. That's the summer. Two months later, the ancient temple of Baal fell to the ground. And not that he had any idea, but when the temple, when the Jehu rises, that happens. Now, now the, the, the Capitol building, actually, which was the center of this, was, it can be used for God, but it can also be used against God. That Capitol building actually was modeled architecturally after the pagan temples of ancient times, of Greece and Rome. 
And, and, the thing is, and the thing is that Jehu's people actually stormed a pagan temple. A little known secret is that it is believed that part of that capital building was actually modeled after the ancient temple of Baal, the same temple that fell when Trump rose. Now there's more to this mystery here, but to say, so if, if, if Jehu overturned the temple of Baal, well, America has had a temple of Baal for many years, and that has allowed us, see, the temple of Baal allowed them to kill their children. The temple of Baal that we've had in America is called, was called Roe versus Wade. It allowed us to kill not thousands of children, millions of children. And actually, it means Trump, whatever you think of him one way or the other, was used to overturn that temple of Baal. How did he do it? Well, he appointed three people to the Supreme Court, specifically the last one, the woman, Amy Barrett, because she was the, it was by one vote, and she was the last one. And so, you know, that when, 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 when one of those, those Supreme Court justices, they had the hearings, it was Judge Kavanaugh, and remember, on Capitol Hill, all hell broke loose on Capitol Hill over that. And the fight was ultimately over this, because they knew that, this, that Roe versus Wade was threatened. And so, but the interesting thing is, in front of the Capitol building, a strange object appeared in the middle of those hearings, in front on the National Mall, and you know what it was? It was the Arch of Baal. They actually erected it on, on, in front of the Capitol building on the National Mall. It was a replica of what had fallen in, in, in across the world when Trump rose. Uh, there is a war. We are in a spiritual war. And part of the spiritual war is, is that. It concerns life. Now, We've spoken of the Jubilee, but you know, the Jubilee, God reverses what man did. What was lost, he restores. Now, now, it's not like your birthday. I mean, you're thinking, most of you are thinking, when you turn 50, it's your Jubilee. No, your 50th year began when you turn 49. It ends when you turn 50. It's actually your 50th year. See, you're actually a lot older than you think you are. You're already in the next year of the next decade, but we're not going into that. So when was the jubilee of Roe versus Wade? It began on January 22nd, the 50th year, 2022, went to January 22nd, 2023. God overturned Roe versus Wade in the year of the jubilee of Roe versus Wade. God reverses what man has done. Now there's a secret to history that CNN will never tell you, the New York Times will never tell you. I wanna share this with you, it's a prophetic convergence, it changed everything. Began in the jubilee year of abortion, which was 2020 when abortion started 50 years later to that. It was a year of the shakings, COVID, the lockdown, summer of rage. And I'd been led with a, another man of God to call for a national day of prayer and repentance. It was called The Return. It was set two years before the year of shaking because we felt that that year was going to be a year of shaking. And it was set for September 26 of 2020 when all the shaking were, the lockdowns and all that. We gathered on the National Mall, tens of thousands of believers from around the nation and millions watched it at home or in churches and took part. We had no idea, but it turned out that the day that was chosen to hold the return fell on a sacred appointed day on the calendar of Israel called Shabbat Shuvah, which basically means the day of the return. So we had the day of the return on the day of the return and had no idea what we were doing. You see, it tells you something. In God, you don't have to know what you're doing. You, don't have, you just have to know the one who's doing it and follow him. So here's a day appointed from ages past for a nation to turn away from its sin, to repent, and have a gathering, and here we are having a gathering of repentance. Actually, the scripture that's appointed to be read in all the synagogues on that day is the scripture of Joel, have a sacred assembly and gather and repent and pray for the curse to be broken, and that's exactly what we were doing without realizing it. But now it's a day for a nation to, to turn away from its sin. Well, President Trump had to appoint his last Supreme Court justice, and it would be, the, that, would be that justice, Amy Barrett, would be the critical one vote that would overturn Roe versus Wade. That was actually the act that set in motion the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Now, we know that's not the end of the story. It's the beginning of the fight, but that was the hand of God. But it began on that day, on, on the day that he would nominate her and set it in motion. Well, the day he chose to set in motion, this is the day of the setting in motion of the overturning of Roe versus Wade, 
He set it on Shabbat Shuvah, the day of return and repentance. Now, I don't think that Trump was studying the original Hebrew. He probably just woke up that day and said, you know, he said, uh, I feel like doing it, okay? It's going to be a great day, fantastic day, like you wouldn't believe, and that's it. That's what Trump did. That, but God is in charge. God is over kings and God is over presidents. God is over all. The ancient sign of God's power, which we're going to do tonight for a blessing on your life, is the shofar, the trumpet. When the trumpet sounded, the walls of Jericho came coming down. When the trumpet sounded, if you lost your land, you got it back. And if the trumpet sounded, if you were in battle, you would win and the enemy would flee. At the end of the prayers of intercession, and one of the major themes I was led to do there was about praying for the unborn and, and for the sin of abortion. At the end of the prayers of the National Mall, I was led that it had to be sealed with the sounding of the shofar, the sounding of God's power, to seal it all in one moment. And, it, and, and I was led that we needed to do it at 5 o'clock. Now, the president decided not only to set in motion what would be the overturning of Rover's Wade on the day of the return, but decided to set it for 5 o'clock. Now, we were running late, so we didn't do it at 5 o'clock, but the president was also running late. I called up, I said, if you got shofars, come on up. These men, six men with shofars and the tali came up with, a, with the trumpets. And I said, everybody, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, the sound of Jericho, when you hear it, shout to God. For the walls to come down. And I said, now we seal the prayers that we've prayed here. And I believe we were sealing the prayers of 50 years of prayers. I said, now in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, let the power of God go forth. And I said the word, go. At that moment, the trumpet sounded and the people shouted. Meanwhile, on the lawn of the White House stood the President of the United States. At his side was Amy Barrett. He opens his mouth and begins the, re, the overturning of Roe versus Wade, sets it in motion. I said go, the trumpet sounded, the people shouted. It was five o'clock, four minutes, and 33 seconds. The overturning of Roe versus Wade began when the president opened his mouth, set it in motion at five o'clock, four minutes, and 33 seconds. The exact same second, the day, the minute, the hour, the second. This is the secret history Behind history, it's not determined by kings and armies. It's determined by the hand of God. And here, this was determined. Roe versus Wade, the overturning began with the prayers of God's people and the sound of God's power, the sound of Jericho. In that split second, the American Jehu was used to help tear down the temple of Baal on the day of turning and repentance in the year of Jubilee. Now, I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I don't want you just to hear this and believe me. I want you to see it. So if, if, if this goes right, you're going to see a split screen. On one side is the return. We're on the National Mall on that day. And you'll see a countdown. On the other side, you will see the president at the same moment. And if this works, you're going to see a prophetic moment that literally altered the course. So if you have it, guys, if you can, if you can show it. With sound. Maybe, can you do it with sound? <laughs> you can read it. Well, that was without sound, but could you see what just happened? Do you see that what happened? We'll, we'll show that. We'll put that tonight with God willing, will sound. At the exact same moment, God over, began the overturning of the death of the unborn. At the exact moment of the trumpets, the power of God. That's the power of our God. This is the God of Moses. He's still alive. The God of David is still alive. The God of Esther is still alive. The God of the apostles is still alive. And he's your God, and he's still alive. For your... Now, tonight, yeah, we'll get this. Tonight, I, I wanna, I'm going to speak of the, the, actually the mystery that 
foretold the invasion of Israel down to the day. The ancient calendar that's been determining everything that's been happening. The, the keys, I haven't even touched on Josiah, the keys for what God, has God given us a template for the, this hour and the days ahead, a guide, a blueprint of what we need to do with that, and we will sound that shofar, we will, we will give that blessing. But I want to do this here. What does this tell you all? It tells you, it tells us that our God is actually really real. He's actually true. You know, if you're really sharp, you know that if you have a speaker, you know, you know on that day, we had 150 speakers or people leading prayers. It started at 9 in the morning. And if you know that, you, if you're really discerning, you know that for a preacher to finish on time is called a miracle. If any one of them had gone one second too long or one second too short, it never would have happened. If the president wasn't late and we weren't late, it never would have happened. If the people who were applauding him, they applauded for over a minute, if that last applause had been one second different, it wouldn't have happened. But you see, God is in charge of all things. When it says he works together all things, he means all things, not some things for your life, all things. He knows every hair of your head and he knows every moment of your life. If you're following God, God has all your times in his hand. And it's all your days in his book and all your moments in his heart. And he's working together every moment together for your good. You don't have to know everything that lies ahead. You just have to follow the next step. You don't have to know all that God has for the rest of your life. You just have to know what you need to do now. The Bible doesn't so much focus on finding the will but obeying the will that you already know. If you follow the will of God that you already know in the Bible... It will lead you into the exact will of God that you don't know your appointed destiny. And remember, that's, this thing is happening. What I just showed you, this exact, that's happening in your life all the time. You just don't always see it. But know that God is working all things as you follow him. Now, we haven't even touched on the mystery of Josiah, but I want to say one thing here about Josiah. Well, Josiah was a man of God who just, he didn't know all the things, but he was just seeking to do God's will. And yet God, you know, one day he was led to go up to the mountain called Bethel. And there, just obeying God, he, he, he actually he smashed the, the altars of the gods on that mountain. And then he saw this stone and he said, what's that stone? And the people said, that stone is, is the monument marking the man of God who came to this place centuries ago and gave a prophecy and named you by name and said you would come here and do this day what you did this day. Can you imagine what Josiah felt? Can you imagine what happened? He realized at that moment he was just trying to do God's will. He was, it, he was led into an appointed destiny. He was born for it. And that's the secret. Follow the will of God he has already given you. Follow the word. You will walk into your appointed destiny. Whatever, is there anything in your life that's not God's will, that is hindering that appointed destiny. Get it out. Today, do what you have to do today. Get it out. And, the more, and, the, and if there's anything that's not in your life that God has called, get it into your life. Take the first step today before you go to bed and you will start, you will be walking to the destiny. Whatever it, God has for you, you're gonna go there. You know, when I came to the Lord, I did so on the top of a mountain. I had never been to that mountain before. I, I didn't know how to get to the top. And it was nighttime. And there were a lot of roads and a lot of turns and choices to make. And yet I didn't make one wrong turn to get to the top. Do you know how? Oh, a, sim a simple thing. Whenever I got to the end of the road, I had to make a right or left. I looked, which road is higher? And take that road. Well, that's the key in your life. There is an appointed destiny. You don't have to know exactly what God has. All you have to do is take the higher step. Every day you are given choices to take a higher or lower step, take the higher step. Every time you take that higher step, you're going higher, 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 and you're going to end up on the mountaintop at the exact appointed will of God for your life. You see, there's one other thing about Josiah in the, before, before I close this, and that is that when the revelation was given to him, it hit him. He was just trying to do God's will, but it was destiny. He was he was prophesied for centuries that he would be born when he was. 
He was appointed for his age. And his age was appointed for him and needed him. Well, you know what? He's not the only one. You were also appointed for this age. You were appointed. You were not just here. God appointed you. He could have put you anywhere. He called you for such a time as this. You were chosen. If you were appointed for this culture, you were appointed for this challenge, you were appointed for this time, you were appointed for America. And if God appointed you, he will anoint you. And if he anoints you, he will empower you. And if he empowers you, you're going to win and become victorious. If you don't give up, just keep going. My brothers and sisters, your God, our God, is almighty. He is the king of the universe. He is the creator of every moment. He's the one who raises up kings and puts them down before whom the mountains quake and the stars obey. This is the awesome God, and he's called you for this hour and for this life. Rise to the high calling that God's given you. For great is your God, great is your salvation, great is your calling, and great is the power he has given you to fulfill it. God has called you into being for such a time as this. Go with it. Rise to it. As the Lord says, in the name above every name and the power of that name, the name of Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords and the God above all gods. Amen. God bless you.